Welcome back, Awakened family. Thank you for joining me again on yet another installment of Awakened. Thank you to all our returning subscribers. Thank you so much for your love and your support. And to all those who are passing by and perhaps who are new to our channel, I hope you do enjoy your stay and you will become part of this wonderful Awakened family. Now, please do not forget to like our videos, share our videos, and of course, subscribe to our channel to help us grow. Don't forget to comment with anything that you would like to share in the comment sections below. Without wasting any more time, let us get right into today's installment. Well, family, in today's installment, I would like us to have a look at teachers and mental health. Teaching may not be considered a typical high pressure job, but there are few who would deny that it's an undertaking that requires a special set of skills, an extraordinarily high level of patience, empathy, and communication. Yet not enough attention is being paid to the mental well-being of teachers. Just having a look in this past week where our metrics have um, received their results and they've done exceptionally well given the circumstances under which they had to do their grade 11 and their grade 12. And in all that, teachers had to turn up a notch in terms of sacrifice their lives, in terms of um, having extra lessons for these children and not enough is done to check in who is actually taking care of the caregivers even parents i don't think they understand the value in which the teacher's role is important in the children's life and upbringing as much as we would like to say that charity begins at home we forget that even the same teachers are also parents to their own children. And then they come to school, they act as parents in our absentia when the children are at school. So they take up on parenting roles in their households and at school. And they come to school as well, like anybody who's a parent who goes to work where it's not a conducive environment at times or perhaps you have your own things that you're dealing with personally from home you bring them to work and not intentionally so but because they are within you um, you are carrying them obviously so teachers also are the same they have their own homes their own families their own struggles their own everything they come to their workplace where they are supposed to now be teaching the same children of ours but not enough is done to check in with them if they are coping how is uh, um, their level of interaction with the kids because you find now with the increase of substance abuse children even go to school under the influence you know they put teachers' lives at a very compromising situation because as a teacher, you don't know if you are teaching children who are hearing you or are they just listening and looking at you because they are under the influence of whatever that they've taken. So teachers end up sometimes losing their lives in their line of duty because of such circumstances. And I think we need to value our teachers in our society more we need to do more for our teachers and how i wish in schools or in every school possibly there will be uh, social workers or or psychologists you know people who can help these teachers to debrief daily daily because they also have to go back to their homes now they carry what they have experienced at school with them into their homes and their children receive that 
you know, which is not fair. So in all that, teachers also had to put in extra work to make up for the lost time amid rotational attendance and sporadic school closures, as statistics shows that people have lost out between 50% and 75% of learning that usually would happen in one school year. So even parents, I think we have felt it because in this rotational attendance, we have had to step in and become now uh, the extension of the teachers at home, you know, with other parents, they even took upon themselves that they will do online uh, full-time learning or remote learning for their, for their children, which now makes you even appreciate teachers even more. But how I wish we could do more in terms of these structures being put in schools for these teachers to be able to, to check in with them how they are doing mentally. For teachers and those whose careers are closely linked to the field of education, the extraordinary demands on one's mental and emotional resources can often take their toll. And it might come as little surprise to those with experience in the profession or those outside of it who've said of teachers, I wonder or I don't know how they do it. That, on its own right there, is the stereotypical frayed nerves and patience, one thing, and in fact the symptoms of a very real problem. If we can sit in our homes and wonder if it's magic or whatever, or how these teachers actually get to do this, if you had to be taken in a classroom for one day as a parent and be put there, to, to be a teacher for one day. I don't think we will be able to do that. But yet we wonder how they do it. But in that wondering, something has to click to say, if they are able or unable to do this, how are we then meeting them halfway? Well, for many, the term self-care is loaded with esoteric connotation, but whether prioritizing oneself take the form of guided meditation or time allocated to exercise, healthy eating and relaxation, it's essential that teachers are allowed to understand that taking care of oneself is not being selfish. When teachers are able to model these self-care tips or practices to students. This has the added benefit of helping children understand from a young age that health doesn't begin and end with fruit, vegetables, water, and exercise. While mindfulness and mental health awareness are in fact being implemented for pupils in many schools, these programs seldom target educators themselves. Educating teachers about practical ways in which to manage their own stress and distress could go a long way to creating more content in classrooms. Though it might sound simplistic, happy teachers are more effective. And teachers who are enabled to be effective are more fulfilled and in turn are more happier. We need to do more for teachers who are exhausted, stressed, and burned out. So how can we improve mental health in schools? Improving mental health in schools has a number of benefits. A higher rate of teacher retention, increasing levels of achievement for students, and lower dropout rates for students to name but a few. Focusing on the need for improving mental health in schools is just the start. Looking after our mental health can begin at school or even at home, but should be part of all aspects of our lives. Teaching stress reduction techniques, removing the stigma around mental health with open discussions on these topics 
prioritizing wellness by ensuring we get enough sleep, adopting a growth mindset towards learning and teaching, focusing on gratitude and having clear boundaries between school and the rest of our lives can all help to improve mental health in our schools for students and teachers alike. Now, speaking of boundaries, teachers, it's important for them to have boundaries. For example, if in a classroom you have a WhatsApp group, which a lot of schools now have adopted, and you don't put time frames for parents to actually uh, uh, to be able to interact with you on that group, it can be stressful. You should put boundaries in terms of from this time and this time, I will be able to engage with you and answer all your questions. But from this time and this time, I cannot. Because we as parents forget that these teachers, they then, at the end of the day, they have to go back to their homes, to their own families and do exactly what we as parents are doing in our homes as well. So we need to give them time and actually say, if, we, if I have knocked off at work, that means teachers have also knocked off at work. So there's no expectations of if I have to text the teacher at 9 uh, p.m., I'm expecting her or him to, to be able to respond at that time. It's not fair. And the pressure that we put on our teachers due to the ill, um, for, for, uh, due to the ills of our own society and even perhaps our own homes. When we say charity begins at home, we need to teach our children how to respect others. We need to teach our children how to be humble, how to be kind, how to show empathy to others. And in, in that way, they even know how then to communicate with others. So if we cover all the ills of our children in the expense of our teachers not doing their work, but we are being unfair because teachers are not there to do that for our children. They are there to impart knowledge to our children. So let us take care and value and show love towards our teachers. Let us protect as a society, let us help protect our teachers. The, the killings and murdering of our teachers in our schools and outside of their schools is unacceptable. We have a scarcity of professional teachers in our country as it stands. And we, when these teachers are gunned down and murdered and all these things are happening around them, they, they feel hopeless and some of them, they don't want to go back to classrooms anymore. They don't want to go back to their teaching uh, uh, um, posts anymore. And then we sit with kids who drop out of school because as a teacher as well, I wouldn't want to be teaching in a school where the environment is not conducive. It's not good for anybody's mental health. But I am expected to do my job to the fullest. And these kids need to also pass at the end of the year with flying colors. But how are we working together as the school, the children and the parents in order to make that or have those expectations reached? So it's important that we work together with our teachers. We work together with our school governing bodies. We work together with um, the Department of Education in ensuring the safety, security, and even the mental well-being of our teachers. Teachers, please, if you watch this, please do comment in the comment sections below. And whatever that you would want us to help you or meet you halfway with, please do express yourself, reach out and let us be there for our teachers because they are doing an exceptional and an excellent job with our children. Now, thank you family for 
watching yet another installment of Awakened. Please do remember to take care of yourselves physically and mentally. Until our next installment, it's bye for now.